Hello, book friends. You know, recently I did a video about 10 favorite books to read on a loop, meaning books that I've already read several times, but I could easily just pick up again and finish the book and then pick it up again, basically, and read it again because it just never gets old. That started give, uh, started me thinking about rereading, you know, and I don't think I do enough rereading. I don't think I do as much as I would like to do. You know, I think that people in the past might have had a different sort of more intimate connection to books because they weren't so readily available as they are to us today, where they're available very easily and also in multiple formats, and there's an extensive used book market. And so books are very, very, very handy for us uh, to access most of us public libraries. And so, you know, I think that the temptation then is to always be reading something new and not really going back and addressing and sort of getting a more, maybe a more intimate relationship with something you've already read in the past. And so uh, I gave some thought to it and I queued up 10 books that I would like to, to, to reread. Um, I've read once in the past but never have reread. And so these are 10 books that I would like to really get queued up and get read here um, over the next few months. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to just kind of kind of kind of run through them. The first one I'm going to talk about kicking it off is Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell. This book was originally published in 2004 and I really enjoyed it at the t I I read this I think around 2010 or so. Um and I I really enjoyed it and then it's since been adapted into a film which I also enjoyed, but this book takes place over multiple in multiple time periods with really common themes that are common common things that uh, connect each of the stories that are in each of the different time periods from the past to the to the present to the recent past I mean to the present to the near future to the f future future to the far future um, and so to me it was just a, a really fascinating and interesting and uh, journey to go on and I would really like to take that journey again sometime fairly soon. Okay, the next one I want to talk about, this is a work of nonfiction. I don't know if you can see this because this cover has got a white kind of band there with the title, The Great Sea, uh, history, A Human History of the Mediterranean by David Abulafia, originally published in 2011. I've actually chatted this book on my channel, um, so I will link to that chat down below. This is a work of nonfiction. Like I said, it's a history of the Mediterranean Sea from prehistoric, far prehistoric times to the present day. And the Mediterranean, this is a this is just a fascinating region to me because it's been a crossroads of humanity for millennia. And so to tell that story in a really engaging way uh, was just a, a job well done on the part of this writer, David Abilafia, and I would really like to read this one again. Okay, the next one I'm going to talk about is Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. This book was originally published in 2005. This is another one that has since gotten a film adaptation, which is also really good. I think a lot of people don't really understand this story. It's, it's an alternative history dystopia. It's an alternative dystopian history, and this concerns some school-age kind of children that grow up together for a very sort of sinister purpose in this society that I won't, I won't give away. But I really think this is a parable for loss, for growing older, growing up and growing older, and the things we lose along the way. There is a quote from this book that I think is just beautiful that I thought I would read real quick. The character here is, is walking along a road, and she is thinking, about her past and all the things she's lost and so she says I was thinking about the rubbish the flapping plastic in the branches the shoreline of odd stuff caught along the fencing and I have closed my eyes and imagined that this was the spot where everything I'd ever lost since my childhood had washed up and I was now standing here in front of it and if I waited long enough a tiny figure would appear on the horizon across the field and gradually get larger until I'd see it was Tommy, and he'd wave, maybe even call. It's just so bittersweet and beautiful. It's all about love, relationships, and, you know, loss. The longer we live, the more stuff we, we tend, more things, more people, and, and things we lose along the way often, and that's kind of part of the human condition, and this is a beautiful sort of meditation on that, and I just love it.
Okay, the next one I want to talk about is the Pickwick Papers by Charles Dickens. Um, I've read this before long ago, but I've never reread. It is a significant time investment, but nevertheless, I want to give this one reread. I recently watched, or fairly recently watched, a, an adaptation of the Pickwick Papers that was done like in the 70s or something, but it was pretty funny. And um, I just love Charles Dickens' characters and you know, the characters that he draws, and really the 19th century England and London that, that Charles Dickens shows us, even, you know, some social commentary there, but usually it's just so, there's just such complex characters that is so readily and easily identified with, and this, this concerns the Pickwick Club, that the uh, Pickwick Club is a, these gentlemen that sort of these oddballs that go out and in the and journey around and then come back and report to the club and Mr. Pickwick actually ends up uh, getting involved with this woman, this widow who misunderstands him and thinks he wants to marry her and they both wind up in debtor's prison. Um, it's just a typical sort of Charles Dickens journey into 19th century England that I just love and I want to get to this one again sometime soon. Okay, the next one I'm going to talk about is Foundation by Isaac Asimov. This book was originally published back in 1951, and it's part of a series. It eventually became a series of six novels, I believe, and it concerns Foundation. Um, it concerns um, a mathematician discovers this concept called psychohistory, where he can actually sort of predict a bit of the future. There's this huge galactic empire that seems to be like, power, uh, indestructible, but he can tell that it's doomed to fall and there's going to be a dark age. And so Foundation um, concerns itself with how to shorten that dark age as well as how to preserve science and culture during the dark age. And so I've read this whole series in the past and I definitely would like to read this entire series again, starting with the first one, Foundation by Isaac Asimov. Okay, the next one I want to talk about here is Joseph and His Brothers uh, by Thomas Mann. This was this is a this is actually four volume four books in one. It was they were published at different times. They were published as independent books um, and then together in this sort of uh, group, uh, you know, bound together all four. The first book is called The Stories of Jacob. The second one's called Young Joseph. The third one's called Joseph in Egypt, and the Fourth one's called Joseph the Provider. I read this a while back and I chatted it, so I will link to the chat down in the details. You can tell it's kind of a chunker, but boy, is this good. If you're into mythology at all, um, this book, it concerns the biblical story of, based on the biblical story of Jacob and Joseph, um, and Joseph's time in Egypt, but it's way more than just a, that. And, and I, you know, I think that the, the fact that it's a Bible story kind of turns some people off or whatever, but it's not r really per se religious, it's mythological, and it's epically mythological. So yeah, a big time investment to read this again, but um, I want to get to it at some point. Okay, the next one I want to talk about is Roadside Picnic by Boris and Arkady Strugatsky. If you've seen my channel, you've seen that I've, I've been reading through the Strugatsky brothers. This is uh, Russian science fiction from the Soviet era. This book was originally published in 1972. Definitely, a new, in English, um, the new translation by Olena Bormashenko is the one to go to if you're interested in reading this. This is all about a contact story. It's an alien contact story, but the thing is, the aliens have come to Earth, and they have scattered just kind of like trash. No one saw them. They didn't communicate with anybody. Then they left, but what we found were their artifacts. Basically, their trash that they would leave like at a picnic. And the thing is, this trash is, 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 is very dangerous in some cases. And the main character in this book, Red, is a stalker. It's a person who goes into this contaminated area where the aliens were because it causes mutations and stuff if you get too close to some of them, um, some of these artifacts, and get, gets these artifacts. And it has technology that the humans work around and do things with, but they don't really understand what its original use was. And it's really fascinating 
fascinating take on the, the first contact story where if we came in contact with an alien culture, we wouldn't probably know or understand a lot of their technology or, or you know, or, or them. So it's fascinating. This was the first of the Strugatsky Brothers novels that I read. And so I'd like to read it again because now I've read several of their novels, many of their novels. And so I'd like to address this one again because it, they were new to me at the time I read this. Okay, the next one I want to talk about is A Man in Full by Tom Wolfe. This was originally published in 1998, A Man in Full. Um, oh, Roadside Picnic, by the way, I, I chatted, so I will link to that chat down below. But back to A Man in Full. This book takes place like in the 90s, the end of the 90s in Atlanta, and it's got a couple of different stories, and one of the main stories is like a real estate guy who's made his... made a, kind of a fortune in real estate in sort of the go-go Atlanta, uh, you know, hot Atlanta of the 90s, and his sort of struggles to maintain his position and his, um, his, uh, all his spending that he's making, that he's doing. And then the other story, which is the one that's more interesting for me to reread, actually, is the story of a guy who winds up in prison but discovers Stoic philosophy while he's in prison, and this changes his life. And so I would really like to read this one again, really for that reason, to just sort of delve into that again. Okay, um, the next one I want to talk about is 1Q84 by Hiroki Murakami, uh, originally published in 2009. Oh, what can I say about this one? It's it's two different realities. This was the first Murakami novel that I read, and I really want to reread this one now because since this one this one was pretty complicated, and it was the one I started with, so I was like, I don't know that I got everything from this that I could get from it now because I've read quite a few Murakami novels at this point. So I want to give this one 1Q84. You can't really see that title. You can kind of tell. Uh, I really want to read this one again. This is all about two two main characters. One is kind of an assassin woman who's, she's in a, she gets stuck in traffic and she decides to abandon the cab and she winds up in a different reality. And then there's another character who's a guy who is uh, kind of like this editor, like book editor, and their stories intertwine, and this assassin and this book editor both wind up in, or, you know, in this, and also two different 1984s going on here, so I want to give this one a reread. Um, okay, finally, the last one I want to talk about is A War Like No Other, How the Athenians and Spartans Fought the Peloponnesian War by Victor Davis Hanson. This was published in 2005. This is a work of nonfiction. It's a history. It is a history of the Peloponnesian War between Athens and Sparta, and I read this uh, quite a long time ago, but it was so fascinating to me because this war is so... Ama it's so relevant, you know, the way that it's written in this book is so relevant to today. And a book you don't think of, the Athens-Sparta War from thousands of years ago, is going to be relevant to us today, but it really is. Athens was this democracy, and Sparta had a little more of an authoritarian kind of like society, but... What Ath some of the decisions that Athens, the democracy, makes, you know, we see these today in our democracy, these sort of same sort of questions that they have to ask themselves, uh, what kind of people they want to be and what kind of people are they? And so this is just a fascinating read to me, and I want to get to this again in the future. All right, that's my 10 books that I have queued up to reread over the next months, and so I hope to get chats on the ones I haven't chatted before. Uh, up on my channel, um, but you know, until then, I will have other stuff coming. So um, keep that book love moving along, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.